you'll find this comprehensive list of interior design styles in Slate Content. You're going to choose one to work with, and when you put it in your search engine, ask for chairs that fall under that design style. Once you've found the chair that you'd like to sketch, you'll need to make a heading for your photo reference page. And this is a student example of a photo reference page. The heading will be the same, but you can choose your own font. Freehand sketch reference is your heading. You'll need to put the photo of your reference, of course, and also at the bottom, talk about what design style you're working in. What is the particular design style of the chair? Now this is the drawing that resulted from our student's choice. She took a blank page in her sketchbook, put a black border all around the inside of the perimeter of the page, set up her horizon line, and began her two-point perspective. Now it's difficult to see, but she's left in all of her analytical thoughts. She has lines for the angles on the chair, she has a big box that she started with, and it was all drawn freehand with her uh, ballpoint pen, her plain ink ballpoint pen. Now down below, she has her mid-century ivory chair listed again, and she wrote that using architectural lettering. Now you'll find this in slate content as well. In taking a closer look at our first student example, you'll notice that she turned her chair in a different direction than the one that's in her reference. That isn't necessary. You can draw according to the direction that is in your picture, if you like. Now we can have a closer look at her perspective lines. All of the things that she did in order to arrive at her final drawing. Now this is a student with a fair bit of drawing experience. We'll be looking at a modern design style for our next student example. Remember that the title for our page is Freehand Sketch Reference, and the design style actually goes down below. Once again, in the resulting drawing, we see the border drawn freehand all around the edge of the page. She has her horizon, her eye level in. She has her two vanishing points. Her chair is below eye level, which is very important. And what's most beautiful is that she's drawn a separate box down below for the seat of the chair because she knows that she has to make that elliptical shape at the back. And she has to compensate and make the back round as well. Remember that you need to note what the name of the chair is down below on this page, on your perspective page. This is our next student example. Now remember to put your design stub, but I think we all recognize the classic club chair when we see it. Once again, in the page set up for the resulting drawing, we have the black border cross corners on it as well. We see the eye level, the left vanishing point, and the right vanishing point. And again, all of the beautiful analytical lines, the boxes and angles that were needed in order to draw this chair at a very much different eye level than the one that was in the photograph. Now, most of these photographs of chairs end up having been shot as if from the eye level of a person sitting in the chair. So it's an invitation to come and sit in that chair and try that out. I point this out because you're going to notice the same thing in your drawing as well. When we're putting it below eye level, it's not going to match the eye level of your reference picture. This student has created a beautiful photo reference page, but remember to note your design style down below as well as the design of the chair. The resulting drawing is larger on the page and fills out the space much better, I think, than any of the other examples we've seen. Uh, see what you can do about that in your drawing. In taking a closer look, I'm thrilled to see her using our ellipse method of dividing into thirds to form her round cushions and help form the roundness in the back of her chair. In our next student example of a photo reference page for this assignment, the heading 
for freehand sketch references at the bottom, not the top this time. But they're both there, so I don't find that to be a problem. Her resulting drawing has a lot there for us to absorb and to learn from. She is obviously someone with a great deal of drawing experience, and when we take a closer look, we'll be looking especially for how she accomplished all those angles. Through keen observation, she noticed that the back of the back of the chair and the back legs lined up. So she invented a box back there and managed to get everything to work out just the way she interpreted her reference picture. This student has chosen a reference picture for her chair that was shot in one point perspective. That whole side of the chair is facing us completely. When she makes her drawing, she'll need to turn it around so that we can see the corner first, the front facing corner first. Now note that we would like to have seen what design style this gray aluminum chair belonged to. Now in the resulting drawing she did a great job. We can see that the front facing leg is longer as the box has guided her to draw it. She didn't give in to the desire to keep all the legs on the same level. We all have that. We've got to fight against it and work with our what our perspective, our two vanishing points, and our horizon line tell us to do. This is close up now, and we can see a little better. Her lines are very faint, but we can see now that we used the box to create the angle, the correct angle side to side for her arms that came right up there from the floor. A very successful drawing, and the texture is quite lovely as well. This is a very successful example of a photo reference page in that we have the proper heading at the top and we know what kind of chair this is as well as what design style it belongs to. The resulting drawing is crisp and clean and figured out correctly in terms of his analysis. You can see that he's used the ellipse division of thirds on the diagonals and managed to keep the seat centered over that pedestal, that column that forms the base of the chair. Note that he did the correct thing with the top of the back of the chair. It's directly on the eye level and he didn't give in to the temptation to put some sort of angle there. On the eye level, things become a straight line.